being a student of medicine and being a student of artificial intelligence. I've seen both sides of the coin. I started studying artificial intelligence after I did medicine for the reason that I thought AI might be able to replace doctors someday. This is a conviction I've had for a while, even before the large language models. But now that these large language models are here, it's going to be interesting to see if they are actually outperforming humans already. So I started doing some research and I did not expect to find anything convincing. We've seen that a lot of these benchmarks that we have, like the MathQA benchmark, these already show that large language models are better than doctors in diagnosis and medical questions. But the problem with these benchmarks is, well, just like the last paper from Apple showed, is that they are often inflated results. And this is because they are contaminated. That means that the artificial intelligence has seen the data before. It's been trained on the whole web. So the probability that it's seen the data is quite likely and that it's memorizing a lot. And that these benchmarks might not mean that much. So is there a way to find out if large ranks models are actually capable considering this caveat that they might be memorizing. Well, I actually found that there is a possibility to find this out, and that's by looking at uncontaminated benchmarks. They, they have been trained on all public data, but there are some papers using their own private data set, or they're using data that is after the training of the model, so they couldn't have seen it. Um, so I've been looking specifically at papers using uncontaminated benchmarks. I expected it to be similar as with the ARC AGI challenge. I expected to find that they are underperforming a lot to what we expect. But reading all these papers, I actually realized that they are not dropping in performance almost at all from removing the contamination. The performance stays quite the same, and I've read a couple papers now. And it, it keeps reoccurring that they check for contamination, and either it's not there, where it's very low, like maybe 10% that the model has seen before in its training data. And then when they correct for this, it does not make a difference. Just taking one study in particular that got my eye here, I've read many more, which I can make more videos about. This is a very important question, of course, especially if you are studying medicine or practicing medicine. Will this be a problem for the future of your career? So I'm looking at this study in particular. It's about the performance of these language models on cases based on actual patients. So these are realistic scenarios. So what they did, they got a lot of data from these patients. They got like their the current symptoms, their medical history, maybe any other additional tests that they did. And they provided to the large language model and also provided to doctors. And they see how they compare. So does one outperform the other? What it finds is really surprising. So let me show you. Just, just look at this table. This is actually insane. The large language model is outperforming them on these real life cases. I'm, I'm emphasizing this. this. These are real life cases. These are not just memorization questions like what's the powerhouse of the cell. It's not asking this. It's getting an actual patient case and asking the model what it thinks the right diagnosis is. And it asks for a differential diagnosis. So differential diagnosis when a doctor gives multiple ideas. Um, listing the most likely at, at first and then going on down the list on which other diagnosis he considers. So what they see is that the working diagnosis, the diagnosis he thinks it is, he gets it right 35% of the time in the uncontaminated data set, which is the set without overlap. Uh, the full set actually has 10% contamination because it's before the training time of the model, which is 2022. And the model, by the way, is Palm 2 from Google. So it gets 35%. It, it gets it 35% of the time to write the diagnosis of the patient. And you might think that's not very impressive. If my doctor fails me two thirds of the time, that seems useless. But l these are hard cases. These are really hard questions. These are not your normal patient visits to the GP. These are of the clinical pathological conferences of the MGA. These are hard questions. So. The model gets it right 30% of the time. And to put this into perspective, what do you think humans get? They only get 13.8%. 13.8%, let us sink in. So to put that into perspective, the AI model is twice as likely 
to make the correct diagnosis. Twice as likely on these hard cases, on these real life cases. Now you're looking at their differential diagnosis, the, the ones they have as most likely also outperforming it by a lot, 55 compared to 34 for doctors. Now that's a substantial difference as well. So, you know, it's being said like large language models, they're nice as a supplement, you know, you can maybe not use them to diagnose, but use them to get an idea of what disease someone might have. So we ask like, hey, LLM, giving this patient case, um, give me 10 most likely diagnoses. And then the doctor can make sure he's not missing anything. But what this is showing is that that's not actually the case. Actually, the LLM is diagnosing better than the doctor. And this is in an uncontaminated data set. On top of that, its top 10 is also better. So yeah, you can use it to get an idea if you don't miss anything. But actually, if you do that, you might as well let it diagnose as well, because it's actually better at that. Then you might think like, okay, but the large language model has a lot of data. It's basically like you've seen the whole web. So maybe if we gave the clinicians access to the internet, they can outperform it. But no, they underperform. They still get only 29% with the internet and 46 in the top 10. That's in the performing large language model. And now here comes the kicker. This is the really interesting part. So you know how we've been putting this emphasis on doctors using large language models or any expert in that sense, using large language models as tools instead of them replacing them. You know, we've been seeing that like, oh, don't be afraid of large language models because they're not going to replace you. They're just going to be a tool for us. It's just going to make our job easier. Well, this is the reason why I'm highlighting this study right now. Doctors use large language models. So they have the large language model available and they are using it. They are using it to make their final diagnosis. So you have a doctor with a large language model. You should have the combined powers of a doctor with an AI. So that, that should be better than a, just a language model alone, right? You have a trained professional with an artificial intelligence, a trained professional. He's and these are not just, you're just out of med school professionals. These are clinicians with 11 years of experience. That's a lot. They've been having 11 years of experience. And what do they find? Well, this is crazy. With the large language model, these doctors, they get, they get a lower score than the language model alone. So with the language model, they get 24%, 24%. So that's better than 13, go to 24. But see this now, the LLM alone got it correct 35% of the time. And looking at the top 10, it's also lower, 52 compared to 55. So that's interesting, right? The LLM gave all these suggestions and the top 10 is still missing things. And of course, you know, you can imagine if you were a doctor, you're not going to listen to this LLM. You might think, oh, he's just rambling. He's just saying dumb stuff. I'm just going to go with my intuition. And that is the problem what we get when we have a smarter system being controlled by a dumber system. When, you know, so putting it bluntly, these models are outperforming doctors. And when a, a machine that's smarter is being controlled by a human that's dumber, whenever do you see a smarter person being controlled by a dumber person and getting a good result? You know, imagine being really smart and good at something and then you have a manager and he's just really dumb. Do you think you're going to perform better? Or do you going to perform better if you're the manager? Well, of course you want the smartest person to be the manager. Because if the smartest person is not the one leading the decisions, then the dumber one is going to hold the whole process back. He might say, oh, this diagnosis is not correct. Or this diagnosis is correct, even though it's not. Because he's not smart enough. And that's what's happening. What I think is happening is even though you combine the AI with the doctor, it's still getting a worse score. So that's really worrying to me. So what does this mean? Well, we might have to rethink this whole thing. Like we think the idea that these models are going to be a tool for us. These models might not be a tool. We might be the tool. We might be the tool for the model. Because the model is going to make the end decision. You know why? Because if the model makes the end decision, accuracy is higher. 
we can expect that because it's smarter. So what's the human then going to do? The human is going to fill in the role of the language model. He's just going to give suggestions. He's just going to say, oh, this is your differential diagnosis. Maybe you should consider this, or maybe you should think about this. And then the model can think about it and just say, no, you're wrong. I'm going to go with my idea. It's getting a better score. It's getting a better score than you. This is really shocking. Of course, you have to be careful with how far we extend these kind of results to practice because these are just one paper, of course, but mind you, I've read many, many papers right now on this subject with uncontaminated benchmarks with real life scenario questions. And the LLMs are outperforming the doctor every time. When they're testing the newest models, GPT-4, uh, and especially O1, which, which doesn't have a lot of research on this yet, but the research that is showing is much better. So extrapolating that, we can really see how this can become a problem. The results show that they are outperforming humans. And, uh, and mind you, this is with the limitation that these models don't have vision. And they didn't see some of the tabular data like laboratory results from these patients, or the doctors did. So despite this limitation, they still outperform them. Imagine if they did have vision, how good would the performance then be? But of course you might say, well, diagnosing based on a fixed report of a patient is a very small part because you also need to collect the data from the patient. You have to ask questions and then based on the probability of the disease, ask the, the next questions. Can a model do that? You might say, well, yes, there is actually a paper. And that paper is showing it's outperforming doctors on the whole diagnosis pathway, on the whole anamnetic pathway. This is crazy. They're outperforming doctors even when they have to ask the questions, even when they have to extract the knowledge and then make a diagnosis. They can do all of that and outperform a doctor. That's just insane. Well, you might say, well, doctors have other responsibilities, right? It's not just diagnosing, it's also treatment. Well, see, I haven't looked at the research yet, but considering this, I really doubt that that's going to be a problem for them. And surely doctors need to do physical manipulation. They do uh, physical examinations. They have to look at the patient. Um, but we have vision models and they are getting better. But they also have to touch the patient. They have to do mechanistic things like measure blood pressure or listen to the heart or the lungs. So is AI going to replace all of that? Well, let's say they don't. Let's say they don't. We can still outsource the whole diagnostic process to these high language models. So then a doctor would only do the physical examination. Imagine a stethoscope. And instead of plugging it into your ear, it's connected with Bluetooth with your computer. And now the model can listen to the heartbeat, or it can listen to the lungs. And all he needs is someone to put a stethoscope on his chest or on his lungs. And he's going to outperform them on that as well. So who's going to do that? Who's going to put the stethoscope on someone's chest? Or maybe it's just something you can buy in the store and you can use that. Let's say there is a human doing this. Will this be a doctor? No, a nurse. But what about human contact? What about empathy? What about someone standing next to your bedside? And you don't want an AI to tell you that you're going to die. Well, okay, let's say we keep doctors just for that. We keep doctors just to bring the message. We keep doctors just to put a stethoscope on your heart. Well, then you don't have a doctor anymore. That's a nurse. We have these people. When you remove the diagnostic process and you remove treatment, all you have left is a nurse. And of course, I'm not talking about the physical specialties like surgery. These will take some more time. But the observational specialties... These are in danger. And it's starting now. I knew it would come, but I didn't expect it to be now. So soon. So if you have a friend, someone and you know, who's studying medicine, who wants to study medicine, share this with them. You might want to make them aware of at least what's going on in the world. And the progress that's happening. Because most people don't know this. Most people around me have no clue. And they're skeptical. And they're, they have the right to be skeptical. But this research is not lying. And I will do more videos on this. Just to convince people. Because I needed convincing too. And that's why I looked at these papers. But I find it hard to see another way. And if you have some reason to believe that this is not going to happen. Then please let me know. 
uh, I'm happy to be convinced otherwise, but right now it's not looking good for us.